Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Welcome back to update number four on the Nova class Starship project. Now in case you're interested and wondering, I am still working on the Enterprise E project, which is right behind me, but the Nova class project is being done for a contest and so it needs to take priority right now in the list of things that has to be done. So I'm back at it this week working on the Nova class project. We left off last week where I had gotten the black paint on the inside. Now since then I've put the white paint on the inside of that lower hull section and it is ready to move over into the refinement stage. So the goal in this week's update is to get the refinement stage on the upper and the lower hull sections complete. Then I'm going to get the nacelle pylons primed. We're going to do the refinement stage on those. And then those are going to be installed into the upper hull section because I need to be able to connect all of the wiring in there and it all connects into that top section. And uh, the reason we're going to be working on that is because lighting is also hopefully happening this week. Now it's a very easy, simple lighting scheme that's going to be happening on this ship. We're basically just going to have some interior lighting, the deflector dish is going to have lighting, and the warp nacelles are going to have lighting. And I don't know if we'll be able to get some sort of uh, navigation light thing. We might just need to allow some light from the inside to glow through on those and put a little bit of um, Alclad red, green on top, something like that. But we'll see what we want to do with that. But I think that this is going to really start to come together in a real way this week and I am super excited. Once all the lighting in the main body is in, we'll actually be able to put the two pieces together because there's going to be a lot of putty work and a lot of refinement on those main seams that's going to have to happen. Um, also, I don't know if it'll happen in this week's update, it might happen in the next week's update, but we really need to recast those warp nacelles so that we can get uh, those primed, refined, reprimed, uh, and get some lighting inside of there. And I think those are gonna take some really small uh, micro LEDs in those. So um, lots to do, and I'm really excited that we're moving on to the lighting stage because things just seem to come to life once you start to get them into the lighting stage. So let's get at it. So I've got a bit of work to show you. First of all, I've done some sanding uh, on this. It's feeling quite smooth and the, the real tell is going to be when I put more gray paint on it. I'm going to show you some close-up pictures, don't worry, um, but kind of just want to give you a bit of a quick overview here. And then also I have the white interior paint done on the lower section and I'm going to need to put the gray primer on the outside. It kind of, it, when you get a little bit of a close look on it, it looks a little bit ghostly. I'll show you again uh, close up here in a moment, but yeah, some good progress. We're, we're, we're getting there. All right, close up of the refinement stage area. Um, not quite sure how this is going to show up on camera, but it is feeling quite smooth. Again, uh, I'll be able to tell better once I get the next coat of primer on. A section that was actually kind of tricky was the circular area right there at the end of the spine because that whole back end where the white is, where the putty is, was completely missing. And it's uh, been reconstructed. I actually just uh, kind of crafted the outside of that area and then stuck a, the proper size drill bit in to clean the inside. So um, some really nice progress going on there. And then this piece, um, again, I'm not quite sure how much of this is going to show up on camera, but uh, one, it's been black light blocked and then white uh, painted on the inside. But um, I don't know if this is really translating on the camera, but it is really rough in there. It looks like they took a solid piece and kind of hewed it out on the inside, carved it out. That's how chunky and uh, choppy it looks. And, and uh, here you can really see it in th this section here on the edge. Um, there's some texturing there. There's a bit of a ripple line right in here. And that's it looks like it's literally been carved out to make the um, hollow section. So that's just kind of really interesting and something that you don't see until 
you get some color on it. So my next step is to get the outside, which kind of has a really ghostly look at the moment, uh, to get that uh, gray painted. I'm going to shoot it with some adhesive promoter and then I'm going to put the gray primer on and that's going to show any of those little areas. And of course, there's that void right on the end here that's got to be filled and I could do that now, but my eyes will appreciate me more if I wait until it's been gray primer because then I'll be able to see what's going on better than, than say on the, um, the clear resin. The clear resin is really hard to, to work with because it's just hard to see all the issues and details and stuff like that. So it is coming along. Next time you see this, the bottom section should have gray on it and I should have some more refinement work done on the upper section. First coat of gray primer is on the outside. It's looking good except for this side, which is really rough, which has to do with the casting process. So that's gonna require a little bit of sanding and refinement there. So I'm gonna get the um, overspray protection tape off and have a good look and start the process of refining this section of the ship. Since this is an update on refinement, uh, I did a little bit of refinement on the base. The base panel in the last update was, was sticking and not really coming out easily, so I've sanded the perimeter. Now if I just turn it over and I give it a little bit of a tap, the bottom just kind of pops out. So that's going to be a lot more useful when it comes to wanting to replace the battery on the inside. So the way this base is going to work is the switch is going to go in here like that. It's going to sit on the side. It's going to be on off. Now this is going to be a very, very tight fit. I'm going to have to bend the posts of the switch and I might need to remove a little bit more of the wood on this side here for the battery to fit in properly just to avoid this edge of the switch. I'm not entirely sure yet. Uh, I'm going to need to actually bend these down and, and see if the battery will fit in to, to, to make that determination. But essentially it's going to fit in here. This is going to be connected to the switch and um, then it will go from there up to the post and into the model. So that's essentially how the base is going to work and it's going to be all covered with that nice little panel and it'll sit here like this with the post and the switch and it's just going to be a nice little base. Bit more refinement work done on the base. If I tip it over the bottom is just going to fall right out now which is awesome. Also I've taken my Dremel tool and I have cleaned out some of the sections so if I put if I put the switch back in, I should be able to get the battery in there no problem. And I've tested this out also with the battery attachment here. So what I'm going to do on the base, the next step is one, I'm going to stain the base and two, I'm going to hook up the switch to power. Um, so that it is ready to go for when I've got the cables going up through, up through the stand. And then, uh, once that's all done, well, once, once this is attached to the switch, I can feed it all into here and then I can permanently uh, adhesive that switch into the base. Just hooked up a little bit of a switch test circuit here. Um, just took my power supply up to the switch and it works. Let me just hit the switch and the circuit turns on. I just wanted to make sure that everything was working properly before I wired it all up and hooked it up into the base. I moved on to preparing the warp nacelle pylons for adhesive promoter and 
for our first coat of primer. There is some work that's going to have to be done to restore some of the corners where air bubbles hit, just like on some of the other areas. But again, it's going to be a lot easier to do that once it is gray and my eyes can see the things better. So I've uh, masked off the areas that I don't want paint to get onto, um, namely the wires that are embedded inside the pylons and the areas where um, the pylons will join to the other pieces just to promote a little bit more um, resin to resin bonding rather than paint to paint bonding. And the nacelles are a really important area to do this so that you don't get any droopy pylons or uh, pylons coming undone. You really want those to be secured in there very well. So I've got these. I've just taped on uh, some toothpicks and just embedding this in some foam just to be able to support that while I put on the paint and the adhesion promoter. So that's going to be done before I leave the studio for the evening so that it can air out the, the adhesion promoter. And then tomorrow, hopefully I'll be able to get some gray primer on those. And then once that fully dries and cures, I can get the, um, the refinement stage done on those. And once those are done and the upper section is done, I will join the nacelle pylons to the upper section so that I can start working on lighting. The base has its two coats of stain on it and I've got the internal components of the base installed. It's a very tight fit, but that is perfect. And the two wires just come up up here the switch is on this side, on, off. So I'm very happy with the way this has turned out. And here is the base complete. The panel on the back is on, everything is installed. The wires are coming through. Um, obviously these are long enough to make it all the way up that post, which will just go in there, but uh, I will be attaching the longer feeds to those wires. So the base is pretty much complete and ready for when the model is uh, prepped to attach to it. First step in getting this thing lighted is getting the nacelle pylons installed and I've done quite a bit of work uh, so far in getting those installed. You can see that there are now holes on the inside for the wires to come through but if you are looking to build this kit be warned this is not an AMT or Polar Lights kit. Um, nothing quite fits the way it should. I have had to drill and scrape and do all kinds of work to try to get these nacelle pylons to fit in properly and they still don't quite go in exactly. So I'm going to need to do my best to align them as well as I can and then fill in the joint with putty to make it look as clean as possible. And um, the way that the two halves are going to fit together. It's going to be a lot better since I recast the part because um, the bottom now sits flat and will join better with the top. The bottom part in the original kit was just splayed so badly. Um, essentially what I did was I recast it and then I took it out of the mold while it was still pliable and let it, let it uh, the, the, the cast harden or, or set cure. Uh, on a flat surface or you essentially taped down to a flat surface so that it cured flat and would mate a lot better. But still, there's going to be so much seam work to do where the two join. I think this kit will probably be about 10% putty by the time it's all done. But this is the first step trying to get these pylons in place um, because I am going to, let's just see if I can get this just to temporarily stick in there. Just stick in there temporarily for me, please. Anyway, um, I'm gonna need these to go in so that I can get the wiring hooked up. So first step of lighting this thing actually has nothing to do with lights. It's getting these nacelle pylons wired up 
so that they are prepped for lighting. And uh, obviously it's a lot easier to work with this stuff with this open. And then let me just grab the bottom part here. The bottom part, which I've, I've, I've done a little bit of, of refining work on so far. You can see here and a few things. Um, this sits over top, so a lot easier to get those pylons um, and all that stuff wired in while this is open. Now I won't be putting the the nacelles themselves on anytime soon, but the nacelle pylons are definitely something that I need to get on there as soon as possible. So um, these have just been primed last night and uh, they've cured all day. So I will do the refinement work that I need to on them. I'm gonna do the rest of the refinement work that I need to on this section here. Um, and then get a next coat of primer on it. Once I get those two refinement stages done, I should be able to join the pylons to the upper section and get that uh, wired up. And that's an exciting stage. More progress. I finally got bottom nacelles that I'm happy with in the casting and I'm getting them prepped uh, to be wired up with the nacelle pylons. And I've also done a little bit of work on the wiring of the nacelle pylons. I've added the um, leads on either and I realized quite quickly that if I didn't deal with that now I'd be struggling to properly attach wiring to it later on. So I did a little bit of a test feed through the aperture I've got in this piece. It's not quite big enough for the wiring with the uh, shrink on it to fit through. So I've got to carve that out a little bit more. Here's the one for the other side. I haven't worked on it yet. But um, important stages to lighting. Not a single bulb yet, but all the groundwork has to go in for this lighting and it is coming along. When I started recording this update, it was cold and snowing. It is now warm, sunny, and I've managed to get some parts outside to get paint on and they've dried up really quickly. So uh, it's really nice to be able to do this and get several coats on rapidly without having to worry about um, fumes in my workspace. So I've got the first coat of primer on the exterior of the bottom sections of the nacelles, which I did the work on getting the um, apertures opened up for the wiring to go through. So I need to mask the bottom and get the light block coats in. So I just went back to the beginning of the video to see just what I hoped I would accomplish in this update and we didn't quite get there. We started the work towards lighting but haven't actually done any of the lighting yet but I'm really happy with progress we have made. I've got a bunch of refinement done. That, that is taking a lot longer than I kind of anticipated so that's spilling over into most of this update and uh, but we do have the upper section refinement well in progress refinement on the lower section well in progress we've got the pylons ready to be installed into the upper section we've got the outside of the bottom section of the warp nacelles primed uh, also i've put the um, adhesion promoter on that as well that's very important to help make sure that all the paint layers stick properly to the model and they don't peel when you go to do masking later on also I finally got I finally got good castings of the upper warp nacelle sections those were honestly the hardest part of this model to recreate but I finally got parts that are going to work for the project. So I've got those pulled from the mold and I've got some of the flashing and stuff removed and I'm going to be working on getting those started on the refinement stage and prep stuff uh, in the next update. So well on the way I do need to get a hole drilled in the bottom of the bottom hull section for the stand, the wood plate installed and make sure all that stuff works out. Uh, and we are going to hopefully get lighting in there pretty soon. But I'm really happy with the progress that's been going on. I want to mention that if you are a model builder who creates content on a platform like YouTube or another platform like that, we've just started a new Facebook group for you. It is 
model building content creators. And I will make sure that the link to the group is in the description below. If you make YouTube or video content online for model building, doesn't have to be Star Trek or sci-fi, can be airplanes, ships, whatever. This is a community to help you and to talk about all the different things that go into creating these videos for model building. So if that is you, go check that out and uh, join the Facebook group. That is all the time that I have for this update. It's been two weeks since the beginning of the video and we've gone from snow and cold temperatures to 24 degree weather, which is kind of nice. And it's been nice to get outside to get some painting. And it means that as we get into the more painting stages, I'm gonna be able to open up the garage door here in the studio or take stuff out to the back deck and get things painted, which is a lot nicer because that means I can stay in my work area and get other things done while paint is drying or uh, I don't have to wait for the place to air out. So if you've enjoyed this update, please make sure that you hit the like button. If you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet, why not hit that subscribe button today? You'll make me very happy if you do. But for now, my name is Andrew. This is Canadian Starships. Have a great day.